All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back. For those of you who were here three weeks ago for the LinkedIn conference, welcome back. For those of you who are new, thank you for joining us. I'm happy you're here. Um, so today is the second conference in our Get to Work series, which we have done together in conjunction with Huella Digital and FIGRI as well, along with the language department. Okay, so in today's topic is called writing your resume in English. Um, you, you should have received by, by now um, a document and activity that you could do beforehand. Um, if you just registered between today and yesterday, well, you have the document, you can take a look. And as always, um, at the end of the conference, you have my email, but at the end of the conference also is my contact info in case you have any questions. All right, so let's begin. So again, writing your resume in English. Why me? Why am I teaching you this stuff? Well, my name is Noel Grand Mason. For those of you that, are not, that don't know me, my name is Noel Grand Mason. Um, I'm from the United States. I've been a teacher at the Exo now for over four years now. And my degree is in international business. And I worked for five years in a multinational pharmaceutical company. And I was involved in the hiring processes. And um, so I do have direct experience um, with what I'm about to teach you today. All right, so let's begin our plan. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick introduction to what a job resume is. You probably know. Uh, and then we're going to talk quickly about the sections that are in a resume, uh, the six sections that are pretty much mandatory, and then a few optional ones. And then, as before, I'm going to give you some quick tips, okay? And then we're going to talk about keywords. We'll take a break. And then we're going to talk about one-liners, final thoughts, and a wrap-up. Ideally, hence the break, okay? Uh, let me think here. All right. So let's begin. What is a resume? What is a resume? So just so you know, we say it like this, resume. Right? It's not resume, it's a resume. And I wrote it there like that so you can understand. In this example, which you have received as an example, a resume for myself, all right? So a resume, obviously, as you know, is a one-page document. It's an advertisement. It's an overview of your skills, your education, your experience, and obviously which you use to apply for jobs. Essentially, it's a one-page advertisement. It's quick, effective. It lets them know who you are, what you know, what you can do, what you're good at, and what your potential value is as an employee. Okay? There are basically two strategies behind a resume. The first one is you want to prove to the employer that you have the skills and knowledge necessary for the job. They need to know that you can do the job that they're going to hire you for. The second one is a little more abstract, but you want to create enough interest with your resume so that they want to know more. And then by doing so, they're going to invite you back for a job interview, okay? So a resume is not your life story. It's not everything you've always done, you've ever done, everything you've studied, every experience you've had. It's rather a one-page, quick-hit document that generates interest. It says, look, I'm good at what I do. I know what I can do. I can do this for you, so call me back. Okay, call me for an interview so you can explain more. My favorite line here is this. The resume gets you the interview. The interview is what gets you the job. Okay, it's very important. So when you're making your resume, when you're preparing, your intention behind making the resume is to get the interview. Later in the interview, is your opportunity to talk about things in more detail, to show more your personality, to tell them stories about your experiences. And so basically, its only goal is to get you that interview so that in the interview, you can get the job. That's where the negotiation happens. That's where you convince them, okay? So, I, so later on, when you're making your resume, I want you to keep that in mind when you're writing it, right? And so you say, look, what will get me the interview? What do I need to say here that will get me the interview? All right. 
Any questions so far? At any point, if you have any questions, raise your hand, and I'll be happy to answer them. And for those of you who are just joining us, welcome. All right, let's do a poll. So how long do employers typically look at a resume? How long do employers typically look at a resume? Is it less than 30 seconds, one minute, or three minutes? How long do you think? Less than 30 seconds, one minute, or three minutes? All right. So here are the results. So it was an even, it was an even game. Seven said less than 30 seconds, and seven said one minute. If you said less than 30 seconds, you are correct. You are correct. So I think that's another thing that you must keep in mind when you're making your resume, right? They're, they're only gonna spend 30 seconds reading it, okay? So everything you put there, everything you say, must be quick to the point and achieve its goal. Because within 30 seconds, you need to convince them that they should call you for an interview. All right, so section two, what is in a resume? All right, so there are basically, I think, six things that you should always include. And then depending on your space and your interests, you can include more, okay? Obviously, the first one is always gonna be your personal or your contact information. Your personal, your contact information. And I will give you more tips on that in a second. And then the second one, nowadays, is very, very common to include some sort of summary statement or profile statement or an objective statement. This part I really like because it's really the one place in your resume where you can sort of inject some sort of personality. Right? And so a lot of it is very cut and dried, right? It's just like bang, bang, bang. This is where I worked. This is where I've studied. These are my skills. But the, the statement up top is a quick summary that allows you to quickly explain who you are. Now, in the document that I sent you before, the activity, uh, there are two things there that you can use. There's a, an activity where you make a draft summary statement. And then in the appendix, there is a, a longer document that has more examples and has a little more in-depth explanation okay but just i wanted to mention this so you don't step over it maite do you have a question no okay no okay so i want i wanted to mention that so you don't step over it so you don't forget about it when you're writing your resume and then obviously we always need to include our work and or related academic experience soft skills and our strengths, our hard skills and our education. Those are the main things that you wanna hit. Now, one note that I do wanna say about work and or related academic experience is, yes, you are students, right? You're students. And so you may not have a lot of what we say work experience. However, you do have a lot of practical experience from your education. Okay, so perhaps instead of having a section that says work professional experience or work experience, maybe you have something called related academic coursework or uh, professional projects or something like that. Because generally in, in your studies, you have done projects that are quite professional and have trained you to do the kinds of tasks that employers are looking for. So I wanted to mention that as well so that don't worry if you go, oh, but teacher, I don't have work experience. So that's okay. You have academic experience, you have project experience, and even life experience. So it's the, while I'm teaching you sort of like the bones of a resume, you do have the liberty, obviously, to change it, right? So it fits your actual history. Um, also, just one thing I wanted to mention in the beginning and that I didn't 
is obviously I'm taking a lot of information and I'm condensing it into something quite short. Okay, this is normally, for example, with my class, this is normally that I'll spend a few weeks on. So just to you know, I'm going to be sending the presentation, I'll be sending the recording, and there are many resources online that you can use. Okay, and also, because I'm going a little quickly, in the sense of how much information I'm doing and how much time we have, it is a good idea to take notes, perhaps, and so you can go back later and clarify what I've been talking about. All right, to continue. So, other sections that you can include, depending on space and your personal history, are, for example, your awards or achievements. Do you have scholarships? Have you won any academic awards? Have you won any athletic awards? Things like that. Any extra extracurricular activities or volunteer experiences are also good. Are you part of the model you win? Are you part of some sort of club or organization at the university? Have you published a magazine at the university or with your friends? So anything like that, that can highlight your knowledge and expertise is valid, okay? And then optional, which for example, you can add hobbies or interests, which are good because it's another way to add your personality. However, this all depends on space, okay? So if you look at this example, like my example, right? I could have put a lot more things, but my intention, right, is one page. And I want to take advantage of the 30 seconds that I have. So whenever you're choosing what to put on your resume, you want to ask yourself, is this essential? Is this essential? And if it's not, consider cutting it out because you do want to take advantage of the time that you have with that person who's reading your resume. Any questions so far? If I'm speaking too fast, let me know, okay? If I'm speaking too fast, let me know. And I'm happy to slow down. I have a small question. What about yes. the photo in the, in the resume? Do we have to put um, it? Okay, it's a good question, Maria Camila. Um, in Colombia, and I think even now in the United States, a photo is used. Look, when I was your age, we didn't use photos. But nowadays, people are using photos. So yes, you can use a photo. You can use a photo. And generally, the photo, obviously, um, it generally goes up top, you know, top to the left margin, to the right margin. You want a professional, you know, closely cropped. to see who you are. Um, but it's optional. Also, if you notice, in my contact info, I do have my LinkedIn profile. And so if they really do want, if you don't include a photo, but you include your LinkedIn profile, they can go to your profile and see your picture. So a photo is optional. That's one of those things that you have artistic license. Um, in Colombia, it's very common to do. And so you, you may feel like you want to, but it's not necessary. Does that answer your question? Yes, perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? For those of you just joining us, welcome. All right, so these are the sections, all right? So again, you want to focus on the first six as the essential ones, and anything after that, just decide based on if it's essential and if you have space. All right, let's continue. Quick tips. All right. So if you remember my last conference, so I like this. It's quick tips. Um, so you may want to take notes so you don't forget. I'm trying to condense a lot of information very quickly. So number one, only one page. Always, always, always. Unless you're Anna or Maite or Cesar, you're only going to have one page. Right? And later on in your career, after 15 years of working, you may be able to have two pages. But when you're starting out, you're only going to have one page. If you have two, don't cut it out. Erase information. Reduce, reduce, reduce. Okay? It's very, very important. Because remember, you only get 30 seconds is one. Two, it's a big difference. If I hand you one paper or two pages, which one would you rather read? Right? And, and so we're also playing a little bit of the whole thing with a resume. We're also playing a little bit of psychological tricks here. Right? 
And so only one page. Later on in your career, when you're the boss, you're the CEO, you've had five jobs, you have a PhD, then you can have two pages. But keep for now, keep it short and sweet. Okay? Two, contact info. Contact info. So you want to make this easy to find and easy to read. All right? Sometimes I've seen resumes where it's way down here in the bottom which I don't really like because your eyes have to look for it, right? And so generally, I like it up top, near your name, right? And so it's easy to find and easy to read. Use hyperlinks when possible. For example, your LinkedIn link can be a hyperlink. So when they open your resume, they simply click the link and it goes to your LinkedIn page. All right. Always, you always want to include the bare minimum, okay? Your name. Your phone number, your email, your LinkedIn, which I highly recommend, and your location. Okay, you don't need your address. Back in the old days, you'd have your street address. I know sometimes in Colombia people put their cedula number. I don't recommend that. You know, so keep it to a bare minimum, right? So if you look at my example here, I have my name, then I have my title, right? My job title, my email, LinkedIn, phone number. And location if you have a Twitter account that's active or an Instagram account or a personal web page you can add those okay but the bare minimum are these any questions all right quick tip number three names and places this is very important okay it's very important and I'll, and I'll explain a little more in the next tip but the resume should have a consistent format. And so with any time you list an experience, a work experience, a volunteer experience, education, a place that you have studied, right? any time there's an organization, right, you need to list this information. And this is a good order to do it. Okay. So your job title or your program, for example, here, International Operations and Planning Specialist. That's my job, that was my job title. Or the program, Bachelor of Science, International Business. Then the name of the business, of the school, or the organization. Okay? So if you notice, I, in my case, I put the first one in bold, and then I put the name of the business. Then the location. Right? You always want to say where it is. I often see people say, hey, I studied at External University of Columbia, but then they don't tell anybody where it was and so you have to guess we have to look it up so after that so after the name you put the location and then you put the dates okay and then you put the dates if you follow this format you can't go wrong and it's also a very widely accepted format i required the functions of each job lorena that comes yes we're going to get to that later we're going to get to that later but let me show you an example so for example, Lorena, as you'll see, here I have, for example, my professional experience, yes? And then on the other side is where I get into the responsibilities or the functions. So right now, I'm just worried about the formatting of how you list this information, OK? All right, so when you put the place, if you follow this format, you can't go wrong. And also, when I talk about psychology, right, one of the things that we are doing is we are playing to expectations, right? We're playing to expectations. So what, what does that mean? It means that in the, in the manner that I follow general expectations, right, or what would you call it, like the culture, of this document, the person reading that will read it quicker. Their mind will organize the information according to their eyes, right? And they'll, and they'll automatically know where the information is and how to read it. And so we save time that way. And so if we can match their expectations with the document, so if they go, oh, here's their work experience. And if you follow this format, their eyes will very easily read the information, right? 
which makes it faster. And so they can scan the document and go, oh, look, uh, Exxon University, cool. Okay, GPA, great. Uh, finance, great. Right? And so they'll go, da, 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 and their mind is doing a checklist. Right? They're looking for certain things. And so if we follow these kinds of formatting expectations, we're making their job easier, and we're making it easier for them to find the essential information. And that essential information is are the keywords, are our tasks and knowledge that show them that we know how to do this job. Okay? And so there's a reason behind all of this, right? We're, we're playing a game, and in a way, a psychological game. So again, if we follow standard formatting, we make their job easier, we make it more likely that they will find the information they need to find. If we give them something that's a little wacky, right, a little out of order, where the contact info is down bottom, right, and your, and your summary statement is over here, they're going to get confused, and they're going to be less likely to actually pay attention and read the document, okay? Any questions? Again, if you have questions, just let me know. Quick tip number four, be consistent, be consistent, okay? This is very, very, very important on many levels, okay? Number one, right, it's the same thing, right? Consistency makes it easy, easy makes it fast, fast makes it effective, okay? And so be consistent. What does that mean? It means use only one font. Pick a font. Is it Times New Roman? Is it Georgia? Is it Arial? Whatever you want. But the whole document must be in only one font. Number two, use equal spacing. All right? Use equal spacing. And I'll show you. So let me see here. All right? Use equal spacing. What does that mean? It means take advantage of white space. All right? Make things, what would you call it? Like put things in equilibrium, make them balanced. That's what it is. Make things balanced, right? And so again, if you look at this example, right? Like at one line, one line, three little things, one line, right? And then I have my summary, and then the left-hand margin, right? I have the places. On the right-hand margin, I have my tasks. And down bottom, I have three columns that I did my best to space evenly, right? So again, that's called equal spacing. All right, and again, use white space, right? You don't need a wall of text, right? You don't need to include everything you've ever done in the document, right? Just enough, just enough, just enough to get their interest, okay? And so you have to pick and choose, right? And use white space and make it attractive and inviting to read. All right, and again, with bullet points, right? When you use bullet points, you know, you don't want you don't want little dots, little circles to start, and then the next one you have triangles, and then the next one you have little stars. No, you want to use the same bullet points, right? Make it consistent, right? Make it consistent. And then again, like I said before, equal formatting. What you do in one section, do in the other. Okay, so again, when you're doing your resume, the content is extremely important, but so is the design. So is like the physical design of it and make it beautiful and make it attractive and easy to read. Okay, any questions so far? Oh, I have a, a chat. Which program? Okay, I'll get to that. Yeah, I, that, that's coming up in a second. Who said that? Lorena. Yeah, one second, Lorena. I'll give you, I'm going to give you guys a couple links that you can use, okay? And here it is, actually, Lorena. So, quick tip number five. Right? I'm not going to get into the cover letter today. That's something else. There's plenty of resources you can find. In fact, I'll send you something later on in an email. However, it's important that your resume and your cover letter are the same format, the same design. Okay? So, let me get you these links. One second. Uh, I can't grab them from here. All right, one second. Let me get you these links. Do, 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 do. All right, in the chat, I'm putting some links. 
Okay. All right, so I sent two links to the chat, okay? One of them is Canva, right? One of them is Canva. I like Canva. It's free. It's easy, easy, easy to use. And it's a, li it's a little less cumbersome than using Microsoft Word, all right? And so if you go into Canva, you just simply type in resumes, right? You simply type in resumes. Make sure you guys can see my screen. Yeah, okay. All right. And they're going to give you a lot of different templates that you can use. Some you need to pay for, and some are free. There's plenty of free ones that you can use. Okay. The other link, the other site that I like, is this Resume Viking. It's cool because it has. Let's see here. I like this one because a lot of them have, I'll show you one second for an example. All right, so a lot of them have the formatting for the resume, the cover letter, right? If you want the thank you letter, right? And so it's cool because it makes it easy to match, right? So whatever program you choose, whether it be Canva or Word or something else that you want, it's important that your resume and cover letter have the same design, the same font, the same colors, okay? And so there you have two links that you can use, which I have used, and there's plenty more online, but I think with those, you can find plenty of options for templates. All right, any question? If you ever have a question, just send a chat or raise your hand. So that was quick tip, quick tip number five. And the last one, number six, all right? This is very important, all right? The file name, okay? The way you name the file is very important. So let's imagine that I am the human resources manager for Disney, right? In Orlando, Florida. And I have a job, right? And I receive 1,000 applications for this job. All right. And then I have another job, and another job. Maybe I have 10 jobs online, All right? And I'm getting resumes and cover letters for all 10 jobs. It can get confusing for me. So we want to make their life easier. And how do we do that? By naming our files in a format that is easy to read and help easy to organize. And so this example is something I recommend. Um, and I recommend this not only for resumes, but for your teachers in the university. If you name your documents like this, you'd make our lives much easier. All right. So you're in, the first thing you do is your name, all right? Your name. And then you can do like the underscore and then the position that you're applying for and the company. Okay. And then underscore again, and then the type of document it is. All right. Generally, you want to send in a PDF. So you have two files that look quite identical. And here's my example, no Graham Mason, English teacher slang, cover letter dot PDF, or no Graham Mason, English teacher slang, and then the resume dot PDF. Okay, this is good because when they get their, your file and they save it, the file name tells them exactly the job that you're applying for. Okay, so I highly recommend that you do this. Because if you just send a document called resume.pdf, or maybe there's a hundred of those, and you're going to get lost in the shuffle. What time is it? 40, okay. All right, any questions so far? That was the last quick tip. All right. One thing, that was the last quick tip. One thing I'm going to be sending you. This is a checklist that I made, right? And that I use to grade my students' resumes. I'm going to be sending this to you as an Excel sheet, okay? So what this is good for is it helps you when you're making your resume to make sure you're checking all the boxes, all right? So the first look, the content, the keywords, and the format and design, okay? And so I'll be sending this to you. I just wanted to mention it so you know what it is when I send it. But when you make your resume, whether it be in Spanish or English, right, you can check it against this and say, hey, am I hitting all the points? Do I have everything I need? Is the design correct? Do I have enough keywords based on the job description? 
All right, so I'll be sending this in an email later, okay? All right. Let's see here. Keywords. How about we take a five-minute break, okay? Let's take a five-minute break. And then we'll come back. I'll talk about keywords. And then we are going to do uh, an exercise. We're going to actually try writing one-liners, which, as Lorena asked you for, like the functions or the responsibilities of our jobs, okay? So, here we go. I will see you back in five minutes.
All right, welcome back. Welcome back. So before I continue, any questions? Is everybody okay to go? All right. So something that's very, very, very important, which we started to do in the activity beforehand is keywords. Okay. Keywords. So what does that mean? What are keywords? You know, we say in Spanish, palabras claves, right? And so what's going to essentially is what we need to do is we always, 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 always need to adapt your cover letter and your resume to the job description. Okay. Now we're always going to have our base resume, but for every job that you apply to, you should put the effort in to add the keywords from the job description into your resume. This applies especially to action verbs, which we're going to look at, right? So like, you know, organized, right? negotiated, managed, directed, created, wrote. Uh, our hard skills, our soft skills, and the job title itself. If we use the job title itself, it's a very good chance that we'll, our resume will cross that barrier. Why? Because what happens is nowadays there are two things that happen, right? There's basically two ways that your resume gets looked at. Many companies use a system called an ATS, right? So they have a job description, you automatically send the resume, and, the, and a computer, or an algorithm, a system, matches your resume with the keywords that they need, right? And it's done automatically, right? And so a little bit, right? And so if your resume doesn't match, doesn't have enough keywords, it's not going to get accepted, right? You you won't get called back, or it's a person, right? If it's a smaller company, it's a person, right? and so using the keywords from the job description is a very easy way, right, to make sure that your resume gets by these two systems, right? The computer one or the human one. All right, and so for example, we have this, right? The, this probably looks familiar for those of you who did the activity, right? But we have a finance. This is a this is an excerpt from a real job description that I found on LinkedIn, right? A finance, young professional, commercial finance. All right, and so the first major keyword that should be included in the resume is your job title, right? The job title that they're looking for, right? And then you want to look at the description, right? And look for sentences like this, like roles, expectations or tasks, responsibilities, right? And then you have to look, and then there's a, generally they're verbs, right? Provide, assist, right? Ability to work, attention to detail, willingness to learn, right? And so oftentimes you'll get a few. Some job descriptions don't have many. This was a good one. It had a lot to work with, right? But so generally you'll find at least a few verbs, action verbs, Right? of your responsibilities, and some soft skills and hard skills. For example, right, a customer focus approach, soft skills, right? communication skills, verbal and written, ability to work under pressure, ability to work in an international environment, to coordinate a team, attention to detail, willingness to learn, team spirit. Okay, So these are the kinds of words that you want to include. All right. So I, I, I say this, it's in the activity, but I say this again, because it's very, very important that you do this. All right. And a, a good thing about it is it makes your life easy and makes your job easier. All right. So we're going to start looking at um, how to make some of the content in our resumes, but by using either a job description that you're actually applying for or a job description of a job that you would like to have, you, you get language for free, right? You get the language that they're using in the industry to describe your responsibilities, right? So it makes your life easy. Because, ah, I don't know what to say here. Ah, I don't know what skills. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect. I have all skills. But I'm not sure which five I should choose. Or I don't know what words to use. And so if you use existing job descriptions on the internet um, for jobs in your industry, you'll get the language that they are using currently today to describe what they're looking for okay so just a, a quick reminder right always adopt your cover letter 
and your resume to the job description. Okay, it's it's the best way that you can ensure the best chance of getting the interview. Okay, all right. Now, let's get to a little bit of the dynamic part of today's course. Okay, today was a lot of a lecture, right? A lot of information I'm throwing at you, but now I want to practice a little bit. Okay, this is the first time I've done this kind of activity in such a condensed environment. Okay, so I hope it works. Right? Generally, this takes a few classes for students to understand, but we're going to do our best to make sure you understand and we're going to do some practice. Okay, one liners. So that is the technical term for these. On, on my, for example, all this stuff. These are called one-liners, right? It's the technical term, right? One-liners, 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 okay? And they have a very specific use of language. It breaks a lot of rules of what we have learned, even in Spanish and in English, right? For example, we don't use subjects, right? So what is it? It's a magic formula, okay? For demonstrating your skills and abilities on a resume. Right? It's keyword rich, it's short, and it's impactful. All right? So basically, we're trying to condense a lot of information into a small space, and we're trying to do it effectively, and we're trying to leave an impression. And what we're doing is the reason I say keyword rich is because they are designed, we're going to design them so that they highlight our skills and our experience but related to what they are looking for, okay? And the idea is to instill confidence in them. To say, oh, this person seems like they know what they're doing, all right? So here's the formula, okay? We're gonna look at it twice, right? And then we're gonna do some practice. Right. So it always begins with an action word, a verb. It always begins with a verb. There's no subject. I don't say I. I never say I managed a team of salespeople, or I wrote a magazine article. I never say that, right? I start with the verb. So all I say is managed, managed a team of salespeople, developed a new system of financial reporting, organized, I don't know, organized something, right? Collaborated, evaluated, negotiated. Now, if you notice, these are generally in the simple past because we're talking about things that have already happened. So uh, a quick note on that. If you're writing about a job that you currently have and you're still working there, you're going to use the present tense, like in mine here. Teach, right? Design, create, implement, right? Give, responsible for. But when you talk about a past experience that is completed, we're going to use the simple past, which is why in the activity I had you practice just the use of the simple past. Coordinated, provided, aided, used. Okay, there's a quick note on that. So, so you always start with the verb and then the details and results. So here's an example. So if you can imagine this, is on your resume in a section like this, okay? Right. Managed team of five employees and reorganized business processes resulting in increased sales and reduced operating costs of $500,000, okay? So far, so good. So let's look at this another way. So let's look at it like if you're a visual person or a math person, right? Like a formula, one, two, three. So action verb, right? It's the first thing always, just the verb. And then the details, what was it, right? What did you do? And then whenever possible, a specific benefit or a result, okay? Why? Because people understand numbers and they understand results, right? And so, if you can show a result in a number, it's always good, right? So, especially if it has to do with money, right? So you, oh, wait, and I saved the company $5,000, right? Or I reduced costs 
by 100 million pesos, right? Or something, or responsible for acquiring 1,000 new readers. Numbers are quick and easy to understand. And what you are indirectly saying to that person is, I can save you $5,000. I can find your company, right? 1,000 new readers, or I can increase sales for your company by 200%, just like I did before. All right, so whenever you can, you do want to point to a result or a benefit that resulted from your actions. All right, I know this is a lot, okay? I know this is a lot, so we're gonna do this together. But just remember, right, action verb, always. Start with the verb. Successfully completed, developed and coordinated, wrote and published, right? And then what? So I successfully completed, what did you complete? An advanced Excel course. And what happened? What was the result? I achieved mastery in designing financial reporting databases, okay? Which lets them know, look, I'm really good at Excel and I understand financial reporting, all right? And a lot of these words you get from the job description, okay? Another one, I de developed and coordinated. What did you develop and coordinate? A social media marketing campaign increasing sales by 200 percent all right so the word the action the what and then the result another one i wrote and published wrote and published three articles for what an online tourism magazine and what was the result responsible for acquiring 1000 new readers all right so these are called one-liners right and this is this section on your resume so i'm going to stop talking for a little while so you guys can practice all right so here's a link okay let me send you a link to this a padlet all right so i'd like you to open this link and when you have it open raise your hand okay open this link and when you see this screen, raise your hand, and then I will continue. So open the Padlet link, and when you have it open, raise your hand. Or give me a thumbs up, or a wink. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to practice, okay? It's, so for those of you who did the activity beforehand, you will have a list of five verbs, right? My five responsibilities, okay? For those of you who haven't, right, there's a list here that I, I will come back and show you, okay? I'll, I'll keep it up so you can look. So what do I want to see? Here, what you do is you hit the plus, okay? You hit the plus sign, right? And then here, I want you to write a one-liner, okay? I want you to write a one-liner. Now, remember, it always starts with the verb. And in this case, use the past tense, right? So it can be organized. It can be managed, right? It can be negotiated, negotiated. It can be created, wrote, designed, published, performed, right? So we always start with a verb and then the what, right? And then you want to put the what, right? The what, what, what was the detail of the activity? What was the project? What was the program? What was the task? Okay. So the verb and then the what and then if possible what was the result what was the result of what you did okay what was the result of what you did all right so the idea is i'd like each of you to put one okay in this case i i left some up from other students that from before right and so you can see some other examples from students like you of what they wrote, okay? And so I'd like everyone to write at least one, all right? And then I can edit it and I can give you some comments because the idea is that you leave here today understanding how to do this, 
okay? And let me know if you have any questions. Whoa, implemented a new blended learning EFL program that successfully benefited over 1,500. I wonder who that is. I wonder who that is. But excellent, that's a great example. All right, so someone put a really good example here, right? It started with the verb implemented, right? I'm gonna put it in over here in the middle. Implemented, and what what did they implement? A new blended learning program, and what was the result? Successfully benefited over 1,500 students. Organize fundraising activities that raised $210. Okay, for whoever wrote that, is it possible to add a little bit more detail? What kind of activities were they? Right? It's, if possible, you don't have to, but it's a, it's a good sentence the way it is. Right? It's a good sentence the way it is. But if you can add maybe one or two more words, an adjective or something, that would be a little bit better. delete the old ones okay develop smart metering projects ah that's a great example so we have a good one here developed smart metering projects resulting in customer satisfaction and an extension in the contract all right Coordinated debts account strategies in order to get, mm, okay, this is a good example. How can I, okay, let's see here. So, where did I go? I lost it. Coordinated debt account strategies in order to get properly reimbursements, okay. Okay, for the person who coordinated debt accounts, do you know how much money you were able to recoup? All right, this is a great example, right? If you can use dollars, you're saying to the person, look, I did this before and I can do it for you, All right? So it's worth paying me money to do the job because I'm going to save you money. All right, let's see here. Co-design endorsement activities with celebrity resulting, excellent. Yeah, you guys are good at this. Very good. Excellent. Participate. Oh, this one's old. Let me delete that one. All right. Uh, participated in the economic magazine Divergence, creating informative papers to learn economy easier. Okay. All right. I think for this one, I think you could use a stronger word. Who's the person who participated in the economic magazine divergence? Who was that? I, I wanna, I wanna, Valentina. Okay, hi, Valentina. Yeah. Hi. So, I think you could use a stronger word. All right. And so, what did you do there? What did you do? Were you like, so I think you could be a little more specific in the verb that you use, because participate is a little soft. All right. Participate is a little soft. Mm, I don't know. Create it. I don't. Yeah, sure. I really don't know which word. Well, were 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 you an editor? Were you the writer? Were you a team? 
that made the magazine? Writer. writer. You're a writer. Okay. All right. How, how many articles, how many papers did you write? Do you know? Mm, three more or less. I don't okay, it's six. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I did a quick example for you, Valentina, okay? So, for example, wrote and published six informative articles for Divergence Magazine, which enabled easier learner of economic theories, something like that, okay? What, one thing that I do want to say about writing a resume, right? It's okay to massage the truth a little bit, right? It's okay to massage the truth. So, for example, um it's okay to use verbs that maybe seem a little higher than what your actual uh <laughs> responsibilities right it's okay to make what you did sound better than maybe it actually was in your mind okay it's okay to do that i'm not saying lie i'm not saying lie right but i am saying it's okay to be more positive and be more confident about what you've done in order to be able to use stronger words that will match the keywords, okay? And so in this case with Valentina, instead of participated, which is a soft thing, right? Oh, I participated. Well, what did you do? What did you actually do? Well, I wrote and I published. Oh, well, that's different, right? So be careful of the words you choose and it's okay to use stronger words than you normally think you would, okay? Let me see if there's any ones that I've missed here. Co-designed endorsement activities with celebrities. Excellent. That's wonderful. No, I have a question. Um, yes, Monica. Yes. Um, maybe you can give us some some additional examples of connecting verbs to express that. Oh yes, of course. I I can read everything if like um resulting. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean. Okay, the connecting ones. Resulting in, resulting in. Yeah. yeah. You know, let's do that together because I, I've had the same challenge myself, right? Okay. So now always okay. use. So something that you can always do online, which I do myself, honestly, a lot, is I, is I look for synonyms, right? I look for synonyms. And so I'll, today I did it myself. Resulting in, right? So, and here we have a bunch of different options. Contributing to, okay. right? Uh, prompting, prompting something, producing something. Okay, so let's see here, as in result and as in bring about, right? Creating, leading to, you could say. So leading to something, something. Um, let's see here. Generating. Hey, I'm going to make a list here on the one-liners, okay? I'm going to make a list, Monica. So we have, what do we have so far? We have leading to, contributing to, generating, okay? Let's see what else we have. Um, hmm, let's go back. Amounting to. Okay, we say amounting to, resulting in, resulting in, mm, bringing about. Prompting, inducing. Inducing is kind of weird. Prompting. Yeah. Here, Monica. Here's a here's a list of six more. Does that help? 
Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank yeah, you. I, you know, I, I was doing the same thing just this morning. Um, I was like, man, I feel like I'm always using resulting in. So thank you for that question. Okay, yeah. see you. I'm, I'm going to put these in the chat so you guys can copy them and paste them somewhere. How do you say cartera morosa in English? Huh. I don't know. Maite, are you there or Cesar? How do you say cartera morosa? I don't even know what that is. Uh, give me a second. Cartera is people that uh, have over... That, Okay. I think it's dues. The company money. Uh, delinquent or, portfolio. Or, 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> overdue, overdrafted bills. Uh, I don't overdue. Know. Let's see here. Delinquent portfolio. Overdue. Yeah, overdue. Delinquent portfolio. But that's what. No, that, I don't know. Yeah, the that, company says that, that's, that. Qu no. that's quite. That's quite. That's just. Literal. It's not, right? it's not, yeah, it's not delinquent necessarily it's just here i see a lot of non-performing i have no idea if this is true non-performing loans well it's not necessarily a loan though because it can be uh, just money that you own overdue portfolio. portfolio overdue portfolio maybe overdue portfolio sounds good yeah okay all right you make sure me make sure i got i'm able to so let's see here am i missing anybody Okay. All right. Anybody else want to try their hand and I can take a look or are we good? Raise your hand if you understand, All right? At least enough to do this later if you use resources. Raise your hand if you understand this function, what an one-liner is and how to write one. Raise your hand if you understand. Only two people? Okay. All right. Now, just one last thing I'll say about this and we're going to end for today, okay? Is it's very important that you do this. It's very important that you do this, okay? Because it is efficient, it's quick, and it's effective, all right? And so, remember, no I, don't say I did this. Just start with the verb the detail and the result, bang, 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 okay? And that way you can list a lot of information on your resume and not use a lot of words and not use a lot of space, okay? Now, I will be sending the recording and I will be sending this presentation uh, to all of you, all right? And so later on when you're looking, if you're like, ah, you know, I don't really get this, it's okay to contact me, let me know, and I can help you, okay? Any questions? before we wrap up. Any questions? Okay. All right, final thoughts. The final thoughts, okay? So, I know, oh, Lorena, do you have a question? No, okay. No, so, thank you. Okay, so final thoughts. All right. Writing a resume is tedious. It is. It's not a fun process. It's not enjoyable. Right. It's quite tedious to write a resume. There we go. Yeah. Word reference. Right. And so it's very easy to not want to take the time or put the effort in. However, however, it is so worth it. Right? It's so worth it. Having a good resume, you know, something. I'm not saying mine's perfect, but having a good resume can make all the difference when you're looking for a job. Okay? It can make all the difference because it represents you in many ways. Right? If I see a resume with a lot of grammatical errors or vocabulary errors, I'm not going to have a high perception of this person. Right? If I see a resume that's beautiful, easy to read, organized, efficient, then my perception of you is going to be that. Okay? And so while it's hard and it takes time, it's very worth it. Okay? So I just want to leave you with that thought. All right? And then you have a lot of resources now. You have the links. You have this presentation. Okay? But if you follow these tips that I've given you, 
Your resume should come out really well, and it'll make a big difference when you're finally looking for jobs, right? And so that hopefully you get the call back for the interview. All right. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? Hold on. All right. So just like last time, right? I teach you how to do these things, but now it's up to you to get to work. Okay. Now, just a reminder on these play on words. Yes, Maite. Oh, I didn't mean to interrupt, though. Um, uh, but it's okay. Okay, no, just really quickly. Um, thanks, Noel. I think that was really, really clear. Um, just to emphasize a couple of things that you said. I mean, everything you said, I think, is, is very yeah, valid yeah. in my mind as well. But um, when you first talked about how long an, uh, an employer, potential employer, looks at a resume, and it's only 30 seconds, that's really true. Um, and so we've made a lot of emphasis on, and you know, on how the resume, what the resume looks like, and that makes a huge difference. You, I, as an employer myself, when I'm looking for resumes, I often, I think, I have discarded people, even if they have the good qualifications, if they don't have a, a nice presented resume or if they have any mistakes, and. Um, and if I have to choose between two people with the same qualifications and their resume it looks nicer, it's well presented, and it just gives me a really good impression, and I'm way more likely to look at the nice, nicer resume, regard not regardless of, but despite you know not necessarily having like all the perfect qualifications sometimes for an interview, because as you say, that's in an in interview is when you actually have a chance to kind of talk more about yourself. So I just wanted to emphasize on that. And I also just wanted to say really quickly that there's a lot of pages where you can look at uh, you can, in English, there's so many pages that can help you through uh, writing in writing in English. And so for example, the thesaurus that you shared um, is a really good tool and things like word reference that I shared. I'm sorry, I, 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 I sent it with some typos there, but you have to be critical. You have to be careful with, with word reference, but sometimes if you're not sure about a term or something from Spanish to English, that could be a good source to, to look at. Um, and the thesaurus, oh, and also action verbs. There's a ton of good resources on action yeah. verbs online that you can yeah. get lists of action verbs. Oh yeah, right that you can't um, look for so that's it i'll shut up no that that, that was great no that, i mean that, that you heard it from the from the boss's mouth right so amite is responsible for hiring right and so it, it's thank you for that that was actually really good it's something that when you're talking came to me as a metaphor right so imagine what our clothes do to how people perceive us Right. So if somebody shows up all disheveled, right, or if you show up nice and organized and well presented, the resume is essentially like that as well. So that's what I thought was like a metaphor. If you think about it, your resume should be nice and clean. All right. We have a, a chat. OK, good. I just yes, shared one, no, I went ahead and shared one. I don't know if you have others. I'm sure you have a ton oh, of other Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yes, Lorena, um, in the activity that I sent, Bum, bum, bum. At the uh, uh, in the appendix, there's a list. Dun, 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 dun. There's a list of 45. In the so appendix number two in the activity, there's a list of 45. But my take to send a great link there. Okay. Any other questions or desires? Okay. All right, so now it's time to get to work. We went in the chat. All right, good. You're welcome, Sophie. And a quick reminder. All right. So and this is a, a series of three conferences. We've done LinkedIn. We've done our resumes. And now the next one in three weeks on October 27th is 10 cues for interviews. Okay, and we're going to be looking at how to answer the 10 most common interview questions with a special focus on answering behavioral interview questions or what do they call that? Uh, there's another name for that. Okay, but anyways, so on October 27th at 4 p.m. We're going to do the third and final workshop called 10 Cues for Interviews. I will be sending an activity to everyone who's registered um, to do beforehand to get ready. 
And that is all for today. Thank you very much for joining us. You can connect with me on LinkedIn. And this is my email address as well. If, I, if you ever need anything, please feel free to get in touch. Yes, Monica, I, I can I can send a recording. Um, that's in my yeah, Monica. Yes, I I will send again the link. I think I need to upload it now to Drive because it's going to be deleted. Probably already is deleted. So yes, Monica, I'll upload it and in my next email to everybody, I will send the link to the LinkedIn thing. LinkedIn recording. Anything else? All right. Thank you, everybody. How, how do I do on time? Let's see here. Ooh, nine minutes early. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you learned no. something today. Thank you yes. for an excellent, excellent seminar. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks for joining us. I'm glad you made it. Hi, Maria Camila. Hi, Lorena. Hi, Monica. Hi, Gustavo. Let me um, stop the recording.